you know, you mentioned Chobani. When I started my company in upstate New York, um, I started from an old closed factory uh, that was there for 70 years. When I started back up, thinking that one day Americans will love the yogurt I will make, as it grew, I hired everyone who used to work in the plant. And I hit a town called Utica that had refugees from 16 different countries. Mm. And they were legally settled, but their refugee status had not been removed because they were having a hard time getting jobs. So I brought them to the plant, and the obstacles are very simple. Language, transportation, uh, maybe the not having the right training for the job that is available. Basically, in front of my own eyes, as Chobani grew, I saw lives change dramatically. So basically, come to, come to a point that refugees are no longer refugees the minute they get a job. And I think the job is the entrance for to study life again, to stand on your own feet again. And I thought in 2016, on the back of Syrian war, if I can take this example and expand it, yeah. maybe we can have an impact on their Migration lives. is a stunningly hot topic in Germany, in yes. Sweden, in the UK, in the United States, ahead of the election. Globally, it is an enormous issue as well. And yet so many Western countries, many of the ones I just mentioned as well, rely on immigrant um, populations, emigres, uh, coming from other areas for whatever reason, <clears throat> to grow their economy because they've got declining birth rates right. as well and, and ageing uh, demographics as well. Are we getting the balance right at the moment in a lot of these Western nations? I mean, the United right. States being the key case in point, it's already a political hot potato. Right. I mean, it, there's a lot of mixed messages are coming from all different dimensions. You know, you, you know, I was just in Mexico. We talked about getting another tent coalition in Mexico committing hiring refugees in Mexico because they have labor shortages in Mexico. And if you ask the people who are moving through Mexico, 70% of them say, if we have chance to have a work, we will stay in Mexico. So that's why the private sector really extremely important coming up front. Now, orderly migration is desired from all dimensions because even migrants don't like that. But here we are in, in, in British, 20% of the companies who are 10 or more employees having hard time finding employment, right? You have millions uh, job opening. And you have 500,000 legally settled refugees here. Some of them Ukrainian, some of them are from Hong Kong, some of them from uh, Afghanistan. And they're having a very hard time finding the jobs. So you have companies need workers, mm. and you have refugees who are settled, refugees settled, and have a right to work, and we need to bring them together. And when that happens, and the magic starts happening, we see them in all over the place. We see them in all the markets. We've been in 11 markets now. This is a work for refugees, for companies, for community and humanity all around. So it works in every dimension. How do you ensure the integration happens? Because you know, Steve just mentioned how political it is around migration policy these days. It's because of how populations feel yeah. that perhaps their jobs are threatened by migration. And then, you know, the messaging from many governments now has been that there's queue jumping going on, which doesn't help us think about a migration story. So how do you practically integrate refugees into a workforce where people might feel that they're being displaced or that their wages are being suppressed because there's now a ready flow of people coming into the workforce? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I think we we saw it when we launched the uh, you know, Ukrainian refugees, um, uh, Coalition for Ukrainian Refugees last year here in London uh, with the U.S. ambassador's help and, and companies in here. You know, these are educated, uh, mostly women, ready to work people. They just happened to be part of the war and they had to leave and they left very fast. Um, and then they had all kinds of rights to work, I mean, even, even here in the U.K. Connecting people with the jobs are the hardest thing to do. And what it does is most of the time you have to train the HR uh, section of the companies. That's what we as TENT do. We work with the HR and, 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 and the leadership and say, you could do some minor changes to have them be part of it. And the second part is I think there are some in-front investment that we have to do for the refugees. They might not have the right language skill, they might not have the right training skills, they might not have all the things that you require, but if you make those investments, in a very short while, we've seen so many uh, uh, economic studies that within three to five years, you're in a positive side from that investment side. And if you look at from the public uh, you know, studies that we've done, majority of UK population supports companies hiring refugees that they're already here and legally settled. 
and majority of young talents wanted to work with the companies who are leaning forward and training and opening doors for the population and, and, and be part of the, uh, their company. So it is really a win-win from all dimensions.